this is Greg from SharePoint Maven and in today's video I would like to explain to you and provide an overview of the two types of calendars we have in SharePoint Online in Office 365. Um, having a calendar on the internet is a pretty common request. Uh, we need to track vacations, we need to track meetings, uh, other important dates and uh, there are really only two choices available to you within SharePoint Online and Office 365. Uh, we only have two calendar options, uh, a SharePoint calendar and an Outlook-based calendar. Uh, so what I would like to do now is give you an overview of each of these web parts and also explain its advantages and limitations. So the first calendar I would like to go over is the SharePoint-based calendar. This is what you see over here on this uh, main internet landing page. This is the SharePoint-based calendar. This is what it looks like uh, when embedded on the, uh, on the SharePoint Online modern page. And this is the type of calendar we had forever in SharePoint. It's pretty much a calendar web part that we always had. Uh, and however, it has been modernized somewhat uh, for the um, modern uh, page uh, experience. So uh, it looks like this, it looks uh, kind of modern. Uh, um, if we embed it on the on the modern page. Uh, behind the scenes though, this is still a good old classic uh, calendar that we always had and I will uh, show it to you uh, what it looks like uh, a little bit later. The second calendar that we have uh, is the Outlook-based calendar. Now, you would typically use the Outlook-based calendar uh, on a team site, uh, on a team site that is part of an Office 365 group. Why? Because, as you probably already know from my previous videos, when we provision a modern team site, a modern site that is connected to Office 365 Group, which is exactly what this site is, um, as part of the deal, you also get not just a site, but you also get other uh, Office 365 apps like uh, a, a, an Outlook-based calendar, um, a planner, an ability to connect to Microsoft Teams, uh, etc. All right. Uh, so this calendar over here is pretty much an Outlook-based calendar. Here it is. Uh, if I click on this uh, calendar link that I uh, added to the navigation, uh, it will open up my calendar, uh, my Outlook-based calendar. This is my personal calendar. But because I'm part of all these different groups, Office 365 groups, this all the different Office 365 groups, and obviously, these are just the, the respective Outlook-based calendars, uh, one for each group. And if you notice, uh, for my HR team site, here is the group calendar for that uh, particular group. So all the meetings, uh, all the important dates are tracked on this uh, group calendar. Uh, and the best part about it is because it's, this uh, calendar is linked uh, to the SharePoint site uh, through an Office 365 group, I can embed those events uh, from Outlook right onto the page, right? And just to kind of show you now, um, obviously I just showed you kind of the finished look and feel, but let's just say we will now want to add those two web parts to the page. How do we go about it? Uh, so obviously we need to hit the edit button to uh, edit the page. Uh, we uh, click the plus icon to uh, find our uh, web parts. So this one right here called events, this is the SharePoint calendar I mentioned to you a little bit earlier. So if I do this web part, it will add a SharePoint based calendar. And let's just, um, let's just call it upcoming events. All right, here we go. If I now hit the plus icon and scroll down, uh, so here's the SharePoint based calendar again. If I go to group calendar, right here. This would be an Outlook based calendar uh, that we already have on the page. All right. And uh, let's just call it a uh, group calendar. So it's uh, nice and obvious. And this is the same meeting as of course, right, that I've uh, been pulled from my Outlook based calendar. Uh, let me publish it so we don't get to lose it. Here we go. So here is the SharePoint based calendar. Here is the Outlook based calendar. So let's talk about the advantages and the difference and the uh, limitations between the two. So this is a SharePoint based calendar. So if I'm going to, uh, what that means is that any events that you 
uh, capture here, they just stay within SharePoint. They are really not connected to Outlook in any way. Uh, so let me uh, just add an event. Here we go. And you can specify, as you can see here, some uh, information about the event. Let's not worry about it. Uh, we can even change the header, uh, put a nice uh, background image. Again, let's not worry about it. Here we go. I just created an event. Uh, let me go back to the home page and this is what it will look like. All right. So pretty much a list of events uh, in a modern style, right? It, uh, you know, because we embedded it on the modern page, uh, it looks nice and modern. Uh, and, uh, but this is not affiliated with Outlook in any way. Now, uh, behind the scenes, behind the scenes, like I said, this is a SharePoint based calendar. So behind the scenes, it is a good old calendar uh, web part that we had for many, many years. So if I go to gear icon site contents, just to demonstrate this to you, Look at this, when I added this events web part, it created automatically my regular Outlook, uh, I'm sorry, SharePoint uh, based SharePoint calendar. And if I open this, look at this. This is what it looks it looked like for many years. This is what it still looks like as of uh, recording of this video. This is the event I just created. So behind the scenes, it's still this classic calendar, uh, classic calendar that we had forever. It just has been modernized somewhat, right? If you want to embed the events uh, and uh, add them to your modern page, um, the, the list of the upcoming events will look modern, but the calendar itself, the month, you know, uh, week and day view, uh, that will still uh, be all in classic mode. Now, one thing as far as Outlook, again, I said, I, I told you earlier, it's not affiliated, it's not connected to Outlook in any way. Um, so if you add event in one place, it's not going to be um, added in another. You can connect it to Outlook. You can connect it to Outlook. So when you press this button, it will actually uh, link the calendar to your uh, desktop uh, version of Outlook. All right, so it will do that. Uh, however, uh, uh, you know, uh, all it will do is it will just really display uh, this calendar um, and, um, you know, we'll have it as an alternate calendar in, uh, in your, um, desktop outlook. So pretty much it will just reside there just like as a, as a separate calendar, uh, altogether. Uh, but this is kind of secondary. This is, this are legacy features. This is, uh, you know, something the user has to do manually, uh, and connect it to their, you know, personal outlook. But again, it doesn't really, it doesn't really, um, connect it to personal calendar. It just presents, um, uh, another, um, you know, calendar as another, you know, calendar and overlay, if you will, uh, in your personal outlook. So that's kind of the story behind the SharePoint based calendar, uh, for the outlook based calendar by default, this is already an outlook, right? So you cannot add events over here from, uh, from the main page. You have to go and add events, uh, from, uh, from outlook. And as obviously if these are group events, you add it to the group calendar in Outlook, they will uh, surface up over here, right? Automatically. And you can even, you know, synchronize it just to make sure that it pulls the latest and greatest um, list of events uh, from within Outlook. All right. Uh, and obviously nothing, uh, nothing for you to click, nothing to synchronize um, automatically everything. Uh, you do an Outlook surfaces up over here and you can see, you know, you can kind of see uh, the past events, the upcoming events, uh, and um, that's pretty much it. Uh, there is to it. So that's kind of, these are the only two options. These are the only two options we have uh, as far as uh, calendars. Uh, obviously, each one has its pros and cons. Um, if you manage your events in Outlook, they, and obviously are part of the group, they will magically appear uh, on a SharePoint uh, site that is connected to the group, which is nice and convenient. Uh, on another hand, if you do not need uh, that uh, to maintain that separate Outlook calendar, uh, the, um, the SharePoint based calendar is a good alternative. Uh, what I find from my experience, um, you know, I've, I see organizations uh, using SharePoint based calendars for mostly for internets, for landing pages, right? If you want to uh, kind of track the events uh, in a one way fashion, right? Maybe uh, holidays when the uh, you know, company is closed or some milestones. Um, however, anytime you have kind of a two week collaboration and team meetings happening all, all over the place, uh, you're definitely better off using 
uh, an Office 365 group team site and the calendar that is attached to it because uh, that is by default an Outlook calendar and any meetings you schedule there will, uh, will show up uh, on the team site as well. So these are kind of the two options um, that are available in, uh, in uh, SharePoint Online and Office 365 as of today. I really hope that at some point the SharePoint calendar will be modernized and it will have the nice modern look and feel um, when, we, uh, when we open it up in the monthly view or weekly view, uh, which is a very, very common request, right? That's pretty much the, uh, the beauty about this uh, specific uh, web part is that you can really uh, you know, change the layout button um, and, uh, you know, between day, week and month. But unfortunately, as of today, uh, it's still in this uh, kind of outdated look and feel. So hopefully this will be modernized at some point. All right. In any case, I appreciate your uh, attention and thank you for watching my uh, video. And as always, I hope to see you soon on my YouTube channel, as well as my blog, SharePointMaven.com. Thank you very much and have a great rest of the day. Goodbye.